Google Docs, for me, as a teacher and a learner, has been the most powerful tool I've, I've used uh, in my years as a teacher and a learner. We're going to focus on creating a student-centered classroom and using collaboration to make students' work better, more exciting, and kind of enhance the quality of, of what they do. I'm going to share with you a little bit about how I've used Google Docs in my own classroom this year uh, in the first unit in design technology. Now, the content that I wanted my students to acquire or the skills that I wanted to learn, them to learn was to use this problem-solving cycle, right? You can, you can tailor this to however your content area is. So their task was to design a hat while following this model, right? Not just any hat. The hat had to protect, a hat that protects your head from water, right? Not only did it have to protect your head from water, it had to stay securely on your head. And it had to be durable and reusable. And you're going to see the tests that we did in order to ascertain that. Now I'm going to show you, I'm actually, I'm going to introduce you to one of my students. While they were creating these hats, they kind of uh, generated personas. They created names. They became one with a hat. I want to introduce you to Sebastian or White Robin Hood. Um, Sebastian is an excellent student. And I want to show you a quick little clip of how his hat endured the rigorous tests. Sebastian. Stay securely on his head. <laughs> oh, no. That is so heavy rain. Oh, CJ, I guess you can just do that. They could use classroom materials or materials from home, and they only had 30 minutes in class to assemble the hat. So it was a design challenge, and they had to come up with the name of the hat as they were building it. Like I said, Sebastian is an excellent student. His hat withstood the tests. This is his design brief. He, he uses Google Docs. He produces excellent work. He models. He used Google SketchUp to make a diagram of the hat. Uh, I was very, very impressed with his work, right? I wanna, I, actually, I was so impressed I featured his work on our, on our website. We made a website called ljdesign.com. If you guys want to check out Sebastian's work, you can, you can go there. And uh, his work was, was featured there. Now, I want to ask you, how can, how can Sebastian make his work better? How can we help him? Feedback. feedback. Yes, feedback. I was thinking that too. Now, what I did was I took Sebastian's document. And I clicked on share in the right corner. And I shared it with my seventh grade class. A member of the seventh grade class is Clay. <laughs> now, Clay is also known as Iron Man when he has his hat on. And he's a pretty smart kid as well. Now, he's in seventh grade. Sebastian's in ninth grade. As an introductory project, grades six through nine did this hat. Now, Sebastian. Uh, wanted to make his hat very simple and effective, as simple and effective as possible. And Clay commented, and he said, he actually gave Sebastian a hint. He goes, good, but the simplicity should not get way in the way of effectiveness. Hint, maybe it should stay on better, meaning that it should be secured very firmly and not to make it too simple. I thought that was very bold for a seventh grader and, and, and putting himself out there. It was good. Here's another girl. Her name's Haley. Haley She's a bit here and there, but she realized something. In Sebastian's plan, he measured things, but in his material list, he didn't include a ruler. So Haley makes a comment and says, you need to measure. You put a ruler on the list. And actually, Haley learned that through personal experience <laughs> because this is Haley, and this is how her hat turned out. Those are some ways that... Uh, Students can give feedback. This, was, this, this, this happened in class on the spot, and um, this could be in, improved and enhanced much more, by, much more by you guys. So the commenting system, uh, as you can see to the right here, Ian Chong made a comment to Sebastian, and then everyone just joined in, and it was this huge frenzy, and, and it was an incredible discussion. Right now, you see there are like profile pics next to each thing. If your students upload a, a, a profile pic to Google Accounts, it'll show all their pictures there, so they automatically know who's, who's commenting where. He makes the comment, oh, this is, this is Ian, by the way. 
and his good friend Kainoa. I'm gonna show you the comments, this is the normal perspective. From a different perspective, if you hit comments, comments appear in more kind of like a Facebook way, like um, we saw this morning. And he says, what about protecting your face? And then his friends join in. <laughs> the rain comes above, worst comes to worst, you can duck your head. Now, so he comes back and says, but the wind might blow it. Meaning you duck your head, the wind blows up. And here's another good question. Allison, who actually involved a balloon in her hat, says, again, what about the wind? What are you going to do? So then this starts a whole new discussion where it comes to their, like, build a flap. You, Sebastian, you could build a flap. And basically, Haley comes into the discussion later, says, try saran wrap. <laughs> Poke eyes and nose holes. So then uh, Ethan comes back and says, uh, Saran Wrap would suffocate you easily. Don't do that. So, and this is completely unmoderated. This is completely them talking amongst themselves, working out problems, problem solving. It's completely student-led discussion. And it's hilarious to read. So we took it to the next level. Now, again, this is very new for me, Google Docs is, like I said, is constantly becoming better. That whole comment stream with profile pics, that's new like over the past two months, I'd say. Now in the past two months, they've incorporated an even more exciting feature. This feature allows you in the comment field just to put at and then someone's email. And it doesn't matter if they have Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, you can bring them in to, the comp to, to this discussion, to this document, as long as you have editing privileges. So Sebastian made a comment on his, in his uh, design brief that said, Visual appeal could use some work. So I'm like, hmm, do I know any visual, visual artists? And I thought of my good friend, Andrea, who's sitting right there. There she is. She's an art teacher at our school. So I put at Andrea Tam, academy.org. Andrea, as an art teacher, do you have ideas on how Seb could have attached visual appeal? So Andrea gets the message in the art room. And she writes back. How about you stop by during lunch? I have some string of ribbon. And she attaches a photo. There she is. So Sebastian reads this, replies back again. Whoa, wow, sounds interesting. He's not too thrilled with the idea, but <laughs> it was nice. Andrea actually went further after he wrote that because she, she thought maybe she could appeal to him with a different tactic rather than string. And she talks about colorful duct tape. So thank you, Andrea. So just, just a reflection. And, and this was one little sample of how I use Google Docs in this particular lesson. And I'm always trying to make things better and always try to uh, do things, improve things. So I just want to uh, put it out there. Who was in this conversation and, and when did they enter? In this case, I invited them. So it was initiated by me. I invited the seventh grade students, and then I called upon Andrea. Going forward, and this can be done easily, the power should be on Sebastian. He knows the system. He's already gotten these feedbacks. He knows what's possible. Having Sebastian reach out. Reach out to who? Students? Experts, anybody. Ian, for instance. Ian said, my dad is a big engineer. He would love to be in on this project. So through a student, you could form another connection. And again, the, the, next, the connection to the expert could be directly through the student without a liaison of a teacher or a student. And that's what, that's what I'm working for. This is a huge, huge um, personal learning development tool. I'm going to turn this over to, to Billy. This is our website, ljdesign.com. And you can see some of what we do here. Feel free to go there, contact us, and, and check in with us. Thank you. How can the use of Google Apps and social media, one, promote critical thinking, and two, lead, student, lead to student ownership of um, their learning? So hopefully by the end of my talk, 
I will have answered those questions for you. And I wanted to start with Google search. I know Google search, been there, done that, we know how to search, but when my students first come into my classroom from day one, I want them to get on the computer, I want them to, to do something interesting and exciting, and they usually don't associate Google search with that. But a lot of them don't realize that you don't have to just search the web. You can search books and products and images and blog sites and news. And they don't, they don't know that. So our first assignment is to do a Google search story. So here's a sample of one of my students' stories. assigned to do six searches that told us about them. And it immediately got them on the computer. They had to sign up for a YouTube account, which we were going to use for the rest of the year. They had to learn how to embed code on our class website. And this was the first day of school. The very next day, they all got up in front of the classroom, in front of their authentic audience, and they shared their Google search story with us. And I think it brought it home to them that Google search is a powerful tool, and there's a lot more to it than what they were accustomed to using. So that was the first thing that we did. And for the rest of my talk, I want to show you how the use of Google Apps scaffolds. It leads to bigger and better use of the internet. So of course, the next thing we have to do is Google Docs, right? And Google Docs, we've already gone over, is very collaborative. It enables kids to create a document together, and that was their next assignment. They needed to go over their summer reading, and with a partner, they had to create a piece of writing. So very similar to an assignment like John's, but instead, they're building the paragraph together, and I add some comments where I feel that they need improvement. They talk to each other through the comment insert on the side, and um, what was what I saw, we had a student who was absent, and she knew we were going to be in the lab that day, and she got online right about the time we were going to be online, and she worked with her partner through Google Docs. Through no prodding of me, she knew the power of the tool, and she and her partner were able to get that assignment done, even though she wasn't in school. Another interesting way to use Google Docs would be back channeling. So back channeling is when you have a real-time conversation while a presentation is going on. And we use Google Docs as an introduction to back channeling because my plans were to use something else later. But I wanted them to get accustomed to commenting kind of etiquette and just the rules of having that kind of conversation while a presentation was going on. So I recorded a piece of text that I knew was challenging. And while they listened to it, I had shared a Google Doc with them that was blank. It was a blank table. And so you can 